Hey guys, welcome back to the continuation of electrolysis. We were dealing with active and inert electrolysis, uh, active and inert electrodes, electrolysis of copper sulfate solution. And now we are going to study the applications of electrolysis. There are basically two types of the applications in your syllabus that I'm going to explain right now. There are many there are many applications of electrolysis, but right now we are going to discuss this. Guys, don't forget that that I have discussed with you that uh, what are binary compounds, okay? Binary compounds are those ionic compounds which are made up of two types of elements. So for example, NaCl is one of the example, PBBr2 is another example. These are made up of two components, two different elements. So these ionic compounds are called as binary ionic compounds and we have studied the binary ionic compounds electrolysis, okay? So right now, today's lecture is related to applications of electrolysis, applications of electrolysis in your syllabus there are two applications by the way there are many other applications which are not part of your syllabus okay number one is electrolytic purification electrolytic purification okay so what is electrolytic purification it is to purify a metal from an impure metal so we will take impure metal and we will make it into a pure metal with the help of electrolysis okay so for example this is an expansive process all those processes in which we are using electricity are considered expansive process okay so right now we are dealing with purification purification of uh, zinc for example or you may consider purification of calcium from impure from impure metal okay so what we are going to do here, we are going to take this uh, circuit and this is, this is an impure copper and we have just, uh, just a collection, just a collection which, which we are taking it as anode and this is the rock you may say, this is the, this is the impure calcium okay as we are discussing calcium and this is the pure calcium here okay so this is the diagram which is for before and this is after and here you can see this thing oh my god what is happening yes it is shrinked and how it is shrinking this you are going to discuss with me shortly okay so this is the original calcium and it is an accumulation of calcium over there and how it is happening that is our topic today so this is positive this is negative this is positive and this is cathode negative okay so i am writing here so anode is made up of impure calcium and this is cathode which is uh, made up of pure calcium i'm writing here pure calcium and this is the remaining remaining calcium anode and one more thing that uh, some impurities will be settled here which are called slime so this is the impurity what is the impurity impurity can be any metal for example iron gold silver any metal okay so impurities so this is called slime i have mentioned here these these impurities are called slime i am mentioning this very clearly that these are impurities okay and this is the solution here okay solution is of uh, calcium nitrate why calcium nitrate because all nitrates are soluble without any exception okay calcium nitrate solution okay and uh, that is acting as an electrolyte and then what is this the internal thing and what is this the external okay i'm telling you about the internal first it is pure calcium original cathode okay and what is the outer thing accumulated accumulated calcium from from where it is coming from anode okay and what are the ions here it is ca2 plus it is h plus one it is oh one minus it is no3 one minus it is h plus it is oh one minus it is no3 one minus and it is <clears throat> ca plus two as well so these ions are there these ions are remain there and what is the change happening look at the change so it is calcium which is coming from anode 
after loss of two electron it is turning itself into calcium ions these calcium ions are traveling from the electrolyte and at the cathode they are going to gain the two electrons and turning themselves into calcium metal back okay so this is just the calcium ion so i am saying this that this state is at the anode and uh, this state is in the electrolyte whereas this state is in the cathode this state is at the cathode okay so loss of electron is happening at the anode whereas gain of electron is happening at the cathode so always the anode is uh, performing oxidation and at the cathode as number of electrons are gained so this is considered as reduction we may write down the equations as well solution is just playing the role of a medium so solution will be remain unchanged no chemical change is happening in the solution okay so what is the equation for the anode it will be ca converting itself into ca2 plus plus 2 electrons whereas at the cathode it is ca2 plus plus 2 electrons arrow ca so we are saying that number of electrons gain and lost are equal so the resultant equation the sum up equation will be this if you have to write the signs the symbol the state symbols then it is in the solid state it is in the aqueous state it is in the aqueous state and it is in the solid state okay okay at one place i was reading a term predominant ions predominating ions or predominant ions okay the word of predominant ions is specifically i'm writing here predominant ions predominant ions okay so what are the predominant ions these are the ions which are in the ionic equations okay because ions so in the ionic equation okay i'm writing an ionic equation for example predominant ions are those which are in the solid state at the end which are making a precipitate at the end which are remain in the form of a compound at the end of the ionic equation let's consider this equation it is feso4 which is reacting with naoh we have written a balanced chemical equation and the product will be na2so4 along with feoh twice okay this is a reaction between an alkali and a metal salt this type of a reaction which we have studied earlier in the cases of acid bases and salts okay so i am i am going to continue this topic as well but let me inform you this additional information and hence it is going to convert itself into fe2 plus and so4 to minus and along with that it is going to convert itself into these ions the naoh thing and it is 2 na plus 1 plus so4 two minus and along with that feoh twice will be remain as it is because it is the solid state okay and these ions are the spectator ions so they will be cancelled so remaining equation will be this and the predominating ions are these ions fe plus 2 and oh minus 1 by because these are the remaining solids at the end okay so please if if someone is mentioning this by the way let me inform you that this term is not part of your syllabus i mean to say it is not part of 5070 it is not part of 0620 but i am just telling you that 5070 which is the gce code and 0620 which is the igcse code i have mentioned it very clearly that this is not part of uh, your syllabus but the uh, predominant term is not written there but predominant term can be mentioned in the exam as well okay examiner can say this thing that these ions are the predominant ions so you people should have just this idea that predominant ions are those ions which are uh, just uh, remain at the end of the ionic equation okay and here i have to mention this as aqueous otherwise my sum up equation or the resultant equation will be considered wrong okay so we have just discussed one of the example one of the application of uh, electrolysis that is purification uh, electrolytic purification we are going to purify a metal with the help of electrolysis we have impure calcium we have taken pure calcium from impure calcium and impure metal will be taken at the anode movement is from anode to cathode 
that's why we are taking the pure metal at the cathode and the whole metal the metal lines which are coming from the anode are going to stick at the cathode that's why cathode is a large in the size there is no color change in the solution we can say anode is shrinking in the size so these can be counted as an observation number one cathode is increasing in the size number two anode is decreasing in the size number three solution will be remain unchanged okay so concentration of a solution will be remain unchanged <laughs> okay so right now we are going to perform the next case and that is called as uh, uh, electroplating it is a second application of uh, electrolysis okay <clears throat> all right application number two It is a second application and that is called electroplating. All right, in case of electroplating, we are plating a metal on an object. We are plating a metal on an object, okay? So what we can do in this case, the plating metal, I'm writing here the anode. Anode should be of metal to be plated. Okay, metal to be plated. Cathode. Object. Object on which plating is needed. Okay, and the electrolyte is of plating metal. All right, now what we can say here, you can look at this anode and cathode and how we are going to do this. For example, let's discuss the case plating of gold on silver rod or silver spoon okay now what we are doing here i am going to draw this on a next page so we are plating gold on silver spoon so this is the circuit this is gold here this is the spoon of silver here okay this is the gold a small decrease in the size and this is the spoon and we can see that there is a small plating happening a thin plating i must not say small thin plating is occurring on the thin plating is done okay so we can say this is a container here, this is a container here, this is positive, this is negative, this is positive and negative here. So this is what gold anode. Okay. And this is what silver spoon. This is remaining, remaining gold anode. And what is the internal part? Original silver spoon. And what is the outer thing? What is the outer thing? Fine, fine gold plating. Okay fine gold plating and then we can draw the solution it is uh, the gold solution okay i'm writing here what okay this color is nice okay and it is gold nitrate solution which is acting as an electrolyte it is just the medium through which the ions can pass so this is uh, this here and this is this here as well okay it will remain unchanged guys let me inform you clearly that these both applications are based upon active electrodes okay 
so here we, what we can say that gold is at the anode and it is moving into the electrolyte and making this and turning into the anode from anode to electrolyte and from electrolyte to cathode okay so it is just uh, i'm writing here this is the situation at the anode this is the situation at the electrolyte electrolyte is again just playing the role of a medium i'm telling you again and again so this is this and it is cathode here and there is loss of electron to change it into this there is gain of electron to change it into this we can say from this state to this state there is an oxidation and from the electrolyte to you may say at the cathode there is a reduction here okay so this is what happening actually we can say here very clearly that gold is turning into gold ions and to electrons so this is the equation of anode and what is happening at the cathode it is the gold ions which are taking the two electrons back turning themselves into gold again gold metal again and this is the equation at the cathode we can cancel the electrons and the sum up equation will be this okay so you can see this thing that there is no change in the medium and remember this thing that um, in this case in this case uh, there is uh, no change to the spoon as well please be careful about that as well here i am writing it is in the solid state it's all the ions are in the aqueous state and wherever it is the metal it is in the solid state one more thing i am taking you back on this page guys spoon will be remain unaffected so the metal which is at the cathode on which we are plating the object to be plated it will remain unchanged it has no role it has no role just like medium it has no role in the electrolysis but medium is just providing the pathway the electrolyte is just providing the pathway through which the through which the ions are moving actually okay so i am writing the ions here so what ions will be there it will be gold 2 plus ions from the gold nitrate solution h plus 1 oh 1 minus no 3 1 minus so these ions are there and they will be remain there and there will be no change in the concentration there will be no change in the in the solution uh, while doing the electrolysis okay so this is what happening in the electrolysis applications for both uh, electrolytic purification and for uh, electroplating as well okay and i am telling you again and again that both of these applications are Mm, you may say applications of uh, active electrodes okay so if we are going to sum up this whole thing we have studied lots of concepts related to electrolysis we can say this thing that what is the definition of electrolysis afterwards the molten electro molten molten uh, binary compounds electrolysis and uh, the the electrolysis of the diluted solutions electrolysis of the concentrated solutions then and then afterwards we are done with the electrolysis of uh, uh, concentrated and then uh, the active electrodes inert electrodes different definitions for that here i have just introduced you with the with the whole thing that is called as anode cathode and then uh, this is very very important look at here look at here i am going to sum up this whole thing so molten compounds electrolysis diluted solution concentrated solutions applications of electrolysis active electrodes electrolysis these are all done electric cell is a basic thing which you should know and i am telling you by comparing the things from your syllabus so hence in this way you can learn about the electric cell as well the details of electric cell are not part of your syllabus what is electric cell that i am going to discuss with you that is not matching with all the previous cases of electrolysis which we are done till now okay so that's why i am going to discuss this electric cell in the next video along with the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell okay thank you very much guys uh, wish you all the best